so let's get started with the first topic and the name of the topic is introduction to published accounts okay i'd like to keep the class interactive so i would appreciate it if some of you can respond to the questions that i'm asking would that be okay with you if i just keep asking mm. or oh, what do we mean by published accounts sir What's your name? Akshata. Okay, Akshata is telling published accounts simply means her accounts which are published to whoever wants to watch them. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll take a point. Now, we'll take, we'll take the example of Arivo Pro. Now, I'm coming and teaching over here. That means I'm logging some time. I have a time log, time sheet and all. So that time sheet data, my salary slip and all will be published. Will be put it on the pub public domain. Can we call that as a published accounts? Yeah. Employee ka data, their personal data, their blood group, their relatives, blah, blah, blah. Company collects so much of data. Yes. All that data company will publish or what do we mean by published accounts? What does the company publish? What's your name again? Yeah. Okay. Diane is saying those which are significant for the investors is given by the public other stakeholders also okay so those which are significant are disclosed any any particular statement that comes to your mind which could have a significance according to you somebody is saying balance sheet sir balance sheet is significant we will publish okay fair enough anything else profit and loss account great balance sheet over p and l over anything else cash flow statement done hey, everything you know and already i will cut this topic uh, my job is done okay balance sheet p and l cash flow statement then Statement of changes in equity. So see, all right, fair enough. Next, notes to account. See, she said everything is given here. Correct. All right, by published accounts, okay, those statements. See, logically, if you buy a shares of Reliance, what will the investor tell? Give me, give me every data. I would like to know. But is it possible for the company to share every of its data? No, right? So what the rules of a particular country or what the authorities have taken a decision is, Okay, we can't give all the dump of data because it will neither be time effective nor cost effective nor it will help you. So we'll give certain set of statements which will reasonably help all the stakeholders as she mentioned. The stakeholders could be investors, potential investor, existing investor, government, creditor, debtor, whoever. Okay, certain data which all the companies are required to publish. Okay, that's what we refer to as published accounts fair enough okay as you already pointed out the first one is the balance sheet so obviously european course so some fancy should be you know so we don't call them as balance sheet in acca we call it as statement of financial position or for our class purpose we will call it as sofp instead of balance sheet we'll refer to as statement of financial position okay so there's nothing but balance sheet is what? It is a statement which gives position of some assets and some liabilities on a particular data. Statement means that particular uh, data is only true for a particular data. If you prepare balance sheet today, it is true only for today. Tomorrow, its value will change. Is it okay? So this is the first thing, balance sheet. Another one is, you said, Profit and loss account. Here there is a major change. Companies not only need to prepare P and L, or rather P and L has two sections over here. One is as you called statement of profit or loss. Or P and L account is what we used to call it in our VCOM or in our plus one days. Here we call it as SPL, as in statement of profit or loss. And also we have something known as other comprehensive income, or for our class purpose, we'll call them as OCI. Have you heard about this term? OCI. Not OC. OCI. Not our uh, South Indian language called OC. Mm, South Indian language, we know what OC means. Free, free, not that. Okay, other comprehensive income. Have you heard about this OCI, anyone? Physically or online, mein? has anyone heard about this? Other comprehensive income. Yes, sir, we have heard, but don't ask what. Mm -hmm. F3 have heard of. Okay, we don't know, no problem. So let's put this one question mark with OCI. 
okay so i'll explain you what this is other comprehensive income basically you know this topic is not something which i have to do it why do i say this normally you have various other topics various standards once i cover the standard no this topic will automatically get covered in a way but what happens is when we come to a particular standard they say this component should go to oci later on what you will ask me what is oci all right so to give you an understanding as to what are these new jargons or new terminologies coming in i'm taking this particular topic so don't have to worry about this topic full fledged me surface level understanding if you get it that is more than sufficient okay i'll tell you i'll at the end i'll ask you a few questions meaning have you understood that much if you have got it that's that is good enough for this particular i uh, mean for now are you okay with this so that means one thing we need to learn from this topic is what now o c i that is other comprehensive income let's see we'll come to that all right third one is cash flow statement cash flow statement simply is what name itself is saying cash flow statement or statement of cash flow it is one statement which gives inflows and outflow of cash cash coming in and cash going out of the organization no that data is captured in a particular statement which we call it as cash flow statement don't be misled by the term cash over here here cash includes bank also cash as well as check transaction in fact what the standard says is cash and cash equivalents we have a separate topic standard we will be covering this cash flow statement there okay but meaning is okay for you for the time being all right everyone all right next one somebody pointed out statement of changes in equity bouncer or okay this one so see heard about it or first time heard about it one is saying yes others are wondering why did i come to this class nothing about understanding <laughs> okay that means we have to put one more question mark that is for so see all right the intention of this particular topic no is only to learn two things oci so see that's all don't worry i'll explain both of them we will solve one question as to how this looks like then we will wind up this topic comfortable the intention is only that if these two were cut off from this topic no i would have not even started with this topic it's only because of these two culprits i'm taking this topic for now okay all right last one somebody pointed as explanatory notes or we used to call them in our golden days as notes to accounts that's all this all this put together we call it as financial statements that financial statements only a company will publish okay who or wants they can view this that's all as published accounts can i move forward all right Mm, nothing we understood sir but we'll still move on sure ah, don't worry uh all right first financial statements what did we discuss as it is balance sheet now onwards we'll not call it as balance sheet we'll call it as we have become fancy now sophisticated what is a sophisticated term statement of financial position you must have prepared this in your f3 if at all you have got exemption also at least in the indian scenario you must have prepared some balance sheet Hmm. by just looking at the statement there is one major difference can anyone point this out just looking at this by looking at have it having a birds eye or overview at a glance there is one difference that you can make what is the difference can anyone tell it don't even have to deep dive the moment you re read the first thing only you'll get to know that there is one difference or there is a some difference between the indian balance sheets and these what are those Uh, somebody is saying indian balance sheet assets left hand side liabilities right hand side or ulta okay that is your uh, the t format but schedule 3 of companies act does not permit that schedule 3 may you have to present in running format normally in indian uh, this thing no okay indian scenario we present balance sheet or rather liabilities first and then the assets here ulta assets data are presented first and then the liabilities are presented Okay, and you have to remember the formats because you are expected to prepare balance sheet and P and L in your section C, which we discussed for a twenty marker questions. Fair enough. So we we'll just run through the balance sheet ka formats quickly. Okay, get a this for anyway. You have to remember the formats. There. Okay, let's run through once just to make sure that we have a little bit of understanding on that. First data is what, sir? As I told you, first we present assets ka data, then we present. 
liability ka data first thing out of your memory can you remember what do we show under assets those of you have done or i'm showing you already let me hide it okay as per schedule 3 if anyone has done schedule 3 of companies act 2013 in the indian con context what do we show under first thing we show under assets first heading is non current assets we already saw that okay below that hey you have to give me the break up non current assets current assets name. under non current assets what under non current assets little louder my hearing no sometimes it comes and goes ah property plan and equipment okay intangibles somebody is saying what is all this okay <laughs> yeah under non current assets first we show property plan and equipment there's nothing but if you remember in golden days you had a term known as fixed asset what is fixed asset do you remember okay now become fancy now we don't call them as fixed asset anymore we call it as property land and equipment that's what it is right i'll explain you why it is this is covered under a standard known as ias 16 our next topic is this only there we will be discussing in detail about this property plan and equipment basically for now it is nothing but fixed asset so the first thing you will show on a non-current asset is fixed assets but we'll for writing purpose or solving purpose we co will call them as property plant and equipment for your class purpose you can remember it as ppe property plant equipment okay next this property plan and equipment can you see here is it visible property plan and equipment means fixed assets this uh, tv ipad camera and all all these are fixed assets are they visible yes you also have some intangible assets like goodwill then patent copyright brand etc etc that i've just called out oh wait is it okay and then you also could also have some investments how to account the investment there is a topic known as financial instrument there we'll be learning intangibles is covered under ias 38 each standard is there we'll be spending enough time you don't have to worry about them for now it's only as i told you it's only surface level understanding how the format of balance sheet looks like how the format of p and l will look like how soci will look like soci means statement of changes in equity how other comprehensive income oci what is it how does it look like that's all we are trying to learn from this topic fair enough don't worry we have enough number of questions where we'll be solving all the balance sheets we just party is just getting started that's all party starts at 7 30 no that is a different party okay this is the study party all right okay first is non-current assets after non-current assets we'll show current assets current assets could be cash inventory debtors or trade receivables etc etc yes for each of them we have a standard like inventory is covered under ias2 trade receivable is covered under financial instrument topic Cash is also covered under the same topic. Assets held for sale will also cover this. It is covered by IFRS 5. There is a separate standard. We'll go into that as well. These are some common examples. So this is just a, an example of current assets and non-current asset. The list is not exhaustive. I just bought in like four or five components just for our understanding purpose. You could have like 10, 15 components under non-current assets also. But for our examination purpose, these are the common components that we're going to see. And that's what we're going to touch upon for the time being. Fair enough? All right. So this is your uh, data, non-current assets and current assets. All right. Let's test our memory because this is just a pure memory game. Format you need to remember. Let's trace it back again. What's the first one? Instead of balance sheet, we call it as statement of financial position or SOF. The first component is the heading is assets under assets non-current assets under non-current assets you will show first one is ppe as in property plant equipment some investments if you have any some intangible assets if you have any those are your non-current assets component next is your current assets which is your inventory trade receivables cash any assets held for sale if at all you have any that's your asset side wala data. Why am I making you mug up all this? Next question, you only need to help me know. Next question is that only preparing balance sheet. Okay. All right. Few things here no, is memory driven. Few things are logic driven. But everything we will learn inside the classroom. If something needs to be mugged up, we'll mug it up in the class. Full fees, so full things should be sorted. That's my funda. Okay. 
All right. Hope this approach is okay for you. I know ACCMA, some of them don't do that. They'll be like, you prepare on your own. But I kind of differ from that approach. I believe everything should be done. Because we don't go home and do it. We don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next. Assets over. Next, what's it? Obviously, liability side. So, heading will be equity and liabilities. Under equity and liability. If you remember Indian scenario, we used to call it as, if you remember, share, share, share. shareholders funds. That used to be our heading. Under shareholders funds, we used to show share capital and reserves in surplus. Yes. Here, instead of shareholders funds, we call it as capital and reserves. Name change, that's all. Instead of shareholders funds, it is capital and reserves. So under this, what will come? Under capital and reserves, the first component will come as obviously share capital and then all the reserves, any reserves that you have. Fair enough? So what is this retained earnings? Do you used to show p and l in your reserves and surplus, guys? p and l account. Would, you, would it come under or have you seen that coming under reserves and surplus before? Do you know p and l? At p and l only, here we call it as retained earnings. Retained earnings is nothing but profits retained by the business. That's all it is. We don't call it as, in Indian context, we call it as p and l. Here we call it as retained earnings. Are we okay? Just a fan, name change again. So basically all the share capital and all the reserves will be put under this particular heading that is capital and reserves. That is one. Done. Next you have what? Non-current liabilities. Non-current liabilities means if you have taken any bank loan or if you have taken any, if you have any, if the company has issued any debentures, etc, etc, that will come under non-current liabilities. Under that normally the we put it under long-term borrow. Okay. So, if you have direct, directly bank loan, instead of long-term borrowings, directly you can write bank loan. That should be okay. Comfortable. Don't worry about this deferred tax. We have something known as IAS 12. There I'll tell you what is the, this deferred tax. It could This deferred tax could come under non-current liability or it could come under non-current assets also. Okay. I'll just cover them what it is and all a little later. It's fine. Okay. So, this is about non-current liability. Last component pending is what? Current liability. Some of the examples of current liability could be our creditors, uh, bills payable, tax liabilities if you have any, which we used to call it as provision for taxation. Yes, those are the things which generally come under current liabilities. Then the total, total we are experts. Obviously, we've been matching it from so many years. Even if it doesn't match, we'll write the same numbers and match it. So we're comfortable with that. We have experts in that. This is the format of statement of financial position. Are we guys okay with this? 100% no doubt. If you have no doubt, then I'll have one doubt. Can I ask? I have one doubt here. Can I? Okay. Sir, there is something known as non-current assets and current assets. Hmm? Okay, let me give you a small example. Debtors. Debtors. Where do you show under? Will you show debtors under non-current assets, meaning NCA? Or will you show debtors under current assets that is CA? Debtors, will you show under non-current assets or current assets? Okay, all on the favorite answer online on offline is current assets. No. Hmm. So it is not, uh, it's not 100%. Okay. okay, she's saying, sir, it depends on the case to case. How about the others? Others, are you 100% sure? Debtors is current assets only. Sir, she said something. Now our heart is telling something else. Till now we were sure. But uh, I think Diane, right? Diane, am I saying it right? Yeah, she confused us. How about online? Online people are 100% pakka. It is current assets. Or is it depends? Anyone would like to change their answer to depends now? Or only one, one taker for depends? Huh? Uh, somebody is saying usually current assets. But it could be something else also. Hmm? Okay. Next concept is that how do we determine whether a component is a current asset or how do we determine whether a component is a non-current asset? There are certain parameters for it. So it is not a mug up scenario. I know that things have got registered in your mind. Cash means current assets. Retar means current assets. Inventory means current assets. Need not be as she said. It can vary based on the circumstance. And can you know that circumstance now? 
everyone i've called it out you don't have to write everything i've just called out everything over here there are actually there are four components but our acca books uses only two uh in indian scenario we use four but what exam are we writing acca that means what is important to us what is cc acca cs right so that means we'll stick only to the two things okay all right so to decode whether a component is a current or a non current right there are two parameters and those two parameters are one if you want to call a component as a current asset then you have to realize that current asset meaning you have to get money from that current asset within 12 months you know you know you must have your plus 1 plus 2 teachers and all must have told you know something which is less than 12 not heard that's it something which is less than 12 current assets something which is more than 12 12 months heard or uh, doesn't ring a bell or that day you bunked <laughs> okay normally there is a popular saying anything which is less than 12 months is a current assets anything which is more than 12 is a non uh, more than 12 is a non current asset for that 12 months no you should not count from the date of transaction anything that is realized within 12 months from the balance sheet date is a current assets did you understand that can i give you numbers if you understood means i'll move on otherwise i'll give you some numbers what do you, what do you want somebody saying give no i paid full fees no. <laughs> okay suppose there is a debtors there is a company let's say a limited they have a debtors let's say this debtor uh, you sold debtor means when will debtor scenario come in a limited has sold these goods to a certain party that party has not yet paid the money so this party automatically becomes what for a limited a debtor yes let's say the sale has happened on 1st february 2023 and our financial year is 1st april 2022 gibberish okay we'll see later 1st april 2022 to 31st march 2023 this is our financial year assumption so that means when will you prepare balance sheet sir when will you prepare balance sheet normally on the year end that means the balance sheet will be prepared on 31st march 2023 okay suppose this debt are told i will pay within 14 months i will pay within or let's maybe make it as 13 months will make it that all told normally you have to give me 13 months credit otherwise i cannot buy the goods from you that's my that's the requirement i have we don't no problem acha you take it okay you are a big customer so we comfortable we trust you so take about 13 months credit i means can you tell me what is the due date for payment you sold the goods on 1st february 2023 and uh, you're going to receive the money 13 months from that day 13 months if you count so jan i think it comes to what uh, can i say 28th february 2024 oh actually one moment mm, okay no problem mm. this is the date am i right in calculating that this is the due date of payment from this particular data everybody okay with this guys okay no you have to say keep saying yes no pa otherwise i'll i'll not off. okay yes okay now my question to you is when you are preparing balance sheet this data will you show it as a current asset will this data be shown as a current asset or it will be classified as a non current assets will this data be classified as a current or non current asset he wants a credit debtor wants a credit period of how much 13 months 1 3 months so when you preparing balance sheet what will you classify what's the popular answer here on offline on offline is saying non current asset nca okay what about uh, online non current ah huh? no what did i say first parameter for non current asset is what current assets are those which are expected to be realized within what months within 12 months from which date from the balance sheet date count from balance sheet date you count 12 months you add 12 months to this date what it will be 31st march 2024 are you realizing the money from your debtor within 31st march 2024 are you realizing money from your debtor within 31st march 2024 yes or no at least in india pa february comes before march i don't know where you are from okay uh, from the place i have come from february month come first and then march comes yes 
So are you realizing the money before 31st March? Yes. That means this debtor will be classified as a correct asset. Don't count 12 months from the date of transaction. Count 12 months from the date of reporting. Reporting means our balance sheet. When the balance sheet date count 12 months. If debtor is paying within that, then when you prepare balance sheet, this will be classified as a current asset. That is the first parameter. Any confusion, anybody? Or okay. Fair enough. All right. So same thing can we substitute for current liability also? Debtors means you will realize the money. Creditors means you will pay the money. So current liability means what? A component which gets settled within what? Within what? 12 months from which date? Again from balance sheet date. So it's a common definition for a current asset and current current assets you will realize current liabilities you will settle if that realization or settlement if it is happening within 12 months from the balance sheet date then that component automatically becomes a current asset or a case of current liability that's all is the first parameter comfortable everyone can i move on to the second parameter Palama, what is the language that normally speaks over here? Hindi, English, Kannada, Tamil, what is it? What language? You don't speak it all. Yeah, actually, you don't speak it all. Correct. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, online also, quite a few people are there. Mm, okay. Cool. Uh, guys, all right. Can we look at the second parameter? Sir, it's our criteria, meaning both the conditions need not be satisfied if one of the parameter gets satisfied then automatically a component gets classified as a current asset or current liability or whatever depending on the case can we look at the second parameter okay second parameter is i'll talk about current assets and we'll redefine the same uh, thing with current liabilities current assets means those components which gets realized here I'll, i'm going to add one more or it gets consumed within the company's normal operating cycle oc a component which gets realized or consumed within operating cycle we call it as a current assets went in or full bouncer bouncer or got it nothing sir nothing we understood okay the question here is what now what is this operating cycle everything looks okay but this oc is not looking fine can i give you a small example The name itself is saying operating cycle. Let's take the help of a trader. What does a trader normally do? As a trader, let's say there is a mobile vendor. What is his business? You don't know? Buying the phones, cell phones and selling the cell phones and recovering the money. Yes or no? That is nothing but your operating cycle. Operating cycle is nothing but it's a time gap or a time period taken for what? From the day you purchase the goods till the day you sell the goods and recover the money. That is your operation. Buying and selling of the goods is normally operations of every most of the vendors. Yes, that's what we refer to as operating cycle. So if you are a manufacturer, okay, from the day you buy the raw materials till you convert that raw material into finished products, after that, what will you do? You will sell the finished product. After that, what will you do? You will recover the money. That becomes one year, one cycle. So that is your operating cycle for a manufacturer. So what about service guy like us? The day you provide the service till the day you collect money for your service. That is your operating cycle. Manageable. Okay. So now, do you know the meaning of operating cycle now? Repeat it one for me. Once for me, let me see whether you have really got it. Operating cycle means what? It's a time period i'll write it down here you help me out it's a time taken or it's a time period between what so between what between the day you purchase of goods everyone should purchase or they could also manufacture they could also manufacture or you could also say date of purchase of goods or raw materials so time period between the day you purchase the goods and you sell the goods and recover the money 
the time taken from the day you purchase the goods till the day the goods are sold and you recover the money that particular time period we refer it to as operating cycle now what did our parameter for current assets say or current liability say current assets are those components which gets realized or consumed within operating cycle so anything which is within operating cycle is a current asset anything which is within operating cycle is a current liability something which is going out of operating cycle is a non current asset or it could be a non current liability that's all is the second parameter ka fund da any confusion on this piece to components all okay online also okay if you don't have any things i'll frame a small case study can you help me out whether it's a current asset or a non current asset now mm, let's see how well you have really understood let's say there is a bamboo dealer meaning there's a guy who grows the bamboo tree he sells the bamboo tree to whoever requires it timber industry or whatever that's his business grow the bamboo tree sell it and recover the money all right okay let us say he feels normally you no know, bamboo trees and all if you are aware it does not grow within like short span of time it takes a while okay normal uh, first initial growth no it takes a long period of time later it shots up like first 50 feet it takes a lot of time the later one that 100 150 feet later partner it shoots like anything okay like that it is okay let's leave that for another day uh, operating cycle for this bamboo dealer no he feels it is 24 months operating cycle for this bamboo dealer is 24 months this bamboo dealer no has a data he sold some bamboos to a particular guy and that guy is saying i'll pay you within 18 months this bamboo dealer has sold the bamboo to a certain person meaning certain debtor and the debtor is saying i need about how much credit period 18 months now the question to you is is this debtor a current asset or a non current asset you can't use first parameter now why 12 months from balance sheet date it is going beyond that's the reason i'm assuming it is 18 okay now you tell me this is a current or non current according to you hey now at least you said you understood no pa now you can tell online also respond proper proper nca ca they saying okay mixed opinion how about here current ah uh, it is within 24 months this 18 months is falling within 24 months 18 months no is fall within within 24 months okay i'm just giving you extra clarity there it is not 24 months from operating cycle it is falling within that okay now what do you think it generally will be classified as a current assets are we okay so that means what sir will we prepare will this company prepare balance sheet every 24 months once no no don't confuse operating cycle with financial statements financial statements will be prepared every year when you prepare balance sheet or pnl every year no this particular data though he is paying after 18 months he will be still be shown as a current assets because he is within my operating cycle that's all as a fund fair enough so these are the two parameters or normally all this will not be much tested in your examination but i feel at this particular level these are some things which you should know these are basics okay that's the reason we spending a little time okay okay these are the two parameters can we have a quick uh, recap what are the two parameters for current assets or current liability one is it should be within 12 months from the balance sheet date what should be how what should happen within 12 months from balance sheet date current assets are realized current liabilities are settled meaning they are paid off and then uh, it's two para both the parameters or any one of the parameters any one parameters or condition so what is the second condition current assets are those which gets realized or consumed within the company's normal operating cycle and operating cycle means what it's a time gap take it's a time gap between the day you procure the goods till the day you sell those goods and recover the money that particular period we call it as oc as in operating cycle comfortable same thing is goes for current liabilities also current liabilities are not realized but they are settled within operating cycle 
But if you observe one thing over here, I have not only written realized, I have also written consumed. Why have I written consumed? Why have I written consumed? Anyone knows? Has any idea about that? Is raw material an inventory? Stock. Inventory means stock. What are the three types of stocks generally that we see? Raw material, work in progress, finished goods. Yes. Raw material means full kacha. Work in progress means na garka na gatka. Between. Neither it is raw material nor it is finished goods. It is somewhere in between. Uh, finished goods is the full fledged product. Yes or no? Now, will any company, will any manufacturer sell raw material or what will they do? Now, I'm a manufacturer of this I pen, let's assume. So, manufacturer, I require certain raw materials. Let's say I use certain metals to manufacture this or let's say plastic I use. Now, will I sell this plastic or what will I do with this, this plastic? Sir? I convert this plastic into pen. That means did I sell this plastic or did I consume this plastic? I consumed it or meaning I utilized it for my manufacturing process. That's the reason even the words consumed has been brought in into your definition. This is more relevant for your Okay, that's a reason. That's all. It's a comment. Any doubts? Beyond 24 months, it becomes non-correct. No, no, no. You don't have to check like that. See, operating cycle, no, you don't check the dates. Operating cycle is a normal. See, I'm giving a, I've started a batch now. All right. So you don't check like ACCA batch started from which date to which date. Now we think what is our normal operating cycle. See, we provide 101 coaching. ACCA coaching may run for six months. CA coaching may run for 11 months like this. Yes. Now we, we find out something known as normal operating cycle. If you have multiple line of businesses, right? We find one operating cycle. Generally, that is 12 months. That is the reason your plus one, plus two teachers used to say what something which is less than 12 current, something which is more than 12 non-current. Indirectly, they were telling you 12 months is your operating cycle. If you don't know exactly the operating cycle, no, it is generally operating cycle is assumed to be 12 months. So you don't count it exactly like that. You find one operating cycle, which is normal for you. Okay. It's 24 months. And then you just check how much time this data is taking to taking time to pay. Is he paying within 24 months? Yes. So current. If he is paying on for if, if his credit period is 25 months, then it is going beyond operating cycle. So he automatically will be classified as a non-current asset. So you don't have to check for that operating cycle. Is he falling in? No, we don't do that. That will be nuts because organizations will have like if you imagine companies like Tata and all, will they manufacture one product? They manufacture salt, water, gita, thousands of products they manufacture. Yes. That means they will have multiple operating cycles. So we can't keep on correlating like that. So we find one common operating cycle and work with it. Good question. Hope I've sorted. Okay. Anything else? Anyone? All okay? Okay. Fair enough. So that means uh, till now we have learnt a little bit. So still two things are still pending. What is that? SOCI and other comprehensive income. OCI. So can we start with other comprehensive income? First, once we do this, then we'll take one numerical question. Hmm? Ah, this one, pay a little attention because each standard will talk about this OCI and all. So that's the reason I just want you to be comfortable with this. That's all. Hmm? Okay. OCI stands for Other Comprehensive Income. Hmm? Okay. As I told you, PNL will have two sections now. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll show you the format of PNL so that you'll get a little more comfortable with that. And then we'll explain the OCI component. You saw the format of balance sheet. Same way, I'm showing you the format of PNL. I told now PNL has two sections. Hence, look at the heading. What is the heading? Statement of profit or loss and 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 other comprehensive income or OCI. So this PNL and OCI put together, we need to present. In fact, uh, IFRS gives you the leeway. If you want, you can present PNL separately, OCI as a separate statement. Generally, practically what the companies do is they club these and prepare 
one statement together. Hence, we have also given the format together. Fair enough. Okay, PNL format when we quickly run through that. First is what? Revenue. So, revenue means what? Revenue means nothing but sales, credit sales, cash sales, whatever. Total sales we call it as or we refer it to as revenue. From revenue, you need to deduct cost of sale. Have you done this format before? Yes. From revenue, if you deduct cost of sales, you're going to get gross profit. Again, this you need to remember. Huh? Nobody is going to give you this. Okay, so revenue minus cost of sales will give you GP. From GP, if you deduct distribution cost, like your selling agents, commission, etc., etc., advertisements, could be anything of those sorts. We call it as distribution cost. If you deduct that, and if you deduct administrative expenses, like your depreciation, salary, blah, 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 you're going to get profit from operations. From that, if you deduct finance cost, finance cost meaning interest. If you have any bank loan or if you have issued any debentures, right? You need to pay on those bank loan taken, your company needs to pay interest, which we call it as finance cost. If you have any finance cost or interest charges, reduce it. If you have any investment income added, all the incomes are basically added up. All the expenses are basically deducted. Investment income as in? What could be that? That is basically interest received, dividend received, etc. etc. If company has surplus money, nobody will keep the money idle, right? They will invest it somewhere. Maybe you will invest it in shares, mutual funds, fixed deposits, doesn't matter where. If you have invested somewhere, you're going to get some returns on it. Returns could be either interest received or dividend received. That way you just call it as investment income. If you add this, you're going to get profit before tax. From this, if you deduct tax expense, as in provision for tax, you're going to get profit for the year. This is your SPL wala section. SPL as in, which you used to call it as PNL account. SPL is nothing but statement of profit or loss. Any confusion in this, anybody? No? 100%? Can you tell me how do you calculate this cost of sale? Let's see. I thought you'll ask me explain this, but since you said yes, let me ask you, how do you calculate cost of sales? Somebody thinks that is nothing but cost of goods sold. Perfect buddy. How do you get that? There's a small fancy equation. No? What is that equation is what I'm asking. First you take, oh, no, 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 no. Cogs come asking, opening stock, not done. Opening stock plus purchases, plus if you have any direct expense, add it. If you have any closing stock, this will give you something known as cost of sales. First time doing huh, anyone? Anyone doing for the first time or heard about this? Heard, huh? okay. Just I'm not sure in the online where they are. Okay, just in case somebody is wondering what is all this. At least have you prepared trading account huh, in your golden days? Can you tell me trading account ka components? First thing, what, what will come on the debit sides? We have done all this. Okay, I call it as OS. Short form is okay. Okay, this is opening stock. Next. You show purchase and next if you have any direct expense you will show direct expense could be your wages factory building depreciation etc etc many direct expenses yes on the other side it is sales and the other side it is closing and then you get a balancing figure if credit side is more than the debit side they will have a happy face and we call that balancing figure as a gross profit if it's the other way around, then it will become a gross loss for the scenario. Good. This is what we have done in our uh, previous bachpan. Okay. Now, if you remember, what is this? Which I've underlined. Trading account. Observe this. What is this statement? An account will have debit and a credit. Statement will have. Statement can have only plus minuses. Yes. That means, can you show these see just because you are not preparing trading account can you skip all these components it has to get captured yes or no so somewhere you need to capture that that is what we are trying to capture here did we take sales in our statement of p and check did we take sales yes that only we call it as revenue now what else is missed out you tell me opening stock missed out okay just put a small dot purchases Missed out in our format. Is it coming in our format check? 
is opening stock purchases coming in no direct expense did it come in no closing stock did it come in no now check sir opening stock purchases and direct expense are they coming on the same side of trading account or different side same side and which is other component that got missed out closing stock so this is another component that got missed out but is it coming on the same side or opposite side now if you want to represent all these form components into one line what are you going to do since these three are coming on the same side what will you do add them up since closing stock is coming on the opposite side what are you going to do subtract now check what have i written for cost of sales opening stock plus purchases plus direct expense closing stock comes on the opposite side reduce it that's all this is an easy way to remember it okay somewhere there's another way also but have you understood this or okay comfortable everyone just a simple pictorial or uh, just uh, trading account components are getting captured in a different way that's it hmm? okay so yeah this is fine you're saying then spl ka no problems okay we'll move on to the second one online also okay no folks i told your pnl has two sections now one is for your normal pnl section and another one is other comprehensive income so let's see what this other comprehensive income or which we been calling it as oci what it really means let's take a small example and understand this let's say there is a a company called uh, hul hindustan unilever hmm? so this hul no they brought a land Let's say they had purchased the land on first April two thousand ten by paying hundred thousand dollars. They paid hundred thousand dollars because all our uh, examination, no, you will not get the values in rupees. You will get it in. The irony is, though that it's a European based examination, but all your uh, numbers will be represented in dollars only. So I'm as much as possible. I'm trying to give the examples also in dollars itself. Okay. you may get it and you must be comfortable with that millions and all they don't use the term lakhs and crores they'll be using the terms millions so we'll see in the examination if you have any issues pop out there it's fine okay ha uh, land was purchased on 1st april 2010 for about 100000 dollars let's say currently no our current financial year is 1st april 2022 to 31st march 2023 this is our current financial year assumption This HUL company, no, they did a quick market survey. We have bought this land for hundred thousand dollars. What is the value now? They checked. They found out that its fair value or its market value, no, on thirty first March twenty twenty three is one zero has increased, sir. It has become one million. I say in Indian scenario, we call it as ten lakhs. Fair enough so far. How much is the price paid? How much did HUL pay to buy this land? Hundred thousand dollars. But the current value of that land is one million or ten lakh dollars. The question to you is: In HUL, HUL obviously will prepare balance sheet. In balance sheet, at what value will they show the land? Will they show it at Hundred thousand dollars, the price that they paid to purchase this land, or do you think they should show this at market value, that is one million or ten lakhs? What according to you? What your gut feel is? Do you understand the example, everyone? Yes. Okay. So what do you think? Some answer I'm getting there is a market value. Some are also telling one lakh. Mixed opinion in the online. Okay. How about here? Hmm. One lakh. Hmm. Not. There's a little confusion. Yes. Okay. How to do this? I'll say again. This will be covered in little more detail when we go for IAS sixteen property plan and equipment. But just to explain OCA component, I'm coming in. I'm just trying to explain. Listen to this. Okay. Uh, see, both are correct only in a way. If company wants, they can show it at one lakh. What is the justification for it? Uh, why one lakh? By the way, because land is not depreciated. you bought it for 1 lakh even after 10 years or 20 years also its value will be 1 lakh only because we don't calculate depreciation 
why maybe later on we'll see okay since it is not depreciated the company has an option to show it at 1 lakh dollars only because that is a price paid but if you think from shareholders perspective they want historical data or real time data historical or real time real time which among this is history uh, which among them is a real time data hundred thousand dollars or one million one million so company is justified in showing in one lakh but at the same time shareholders expectation or uh, public expectation could be show one million. yes so what the standard in fact ias 16 brought in this concept what they told us okay let's give an option to the company Let's give an option to the company. If they want, they can continue to show this asset at $100,000. All right. Or if the company wants, they can also go to go choose second option and show this asset at 1 million because both are justified in their own reasons. Okay. So why didn't they adopt this only? Because this is more real time. It will make more sense. Sir, I, I gave you the fair value 10 million and you're saying 10 million. Is it easy to find out the fair value of the land just like that? Is it easy to find the market value of a particular asset? Easy. See, if you have Infosys ka shares or Wipro ka share, easy to find out. You'll go into Bombay Stock Exchange or National Stock Exchange, check the price and you'll find the fair value. Suppose I ask you, what is the fair value of this computer, this television, this iPad? Can you say like that? Can you say? In split second, can you tell me its fair value? I means this fair value, no? it's not that easy find. There is a separate standard for it, IFRS 13, which I'll just talk about it. It's there in a little bit, uh, not much, it's few details they have covered. We'll talk about it, how to find the fair value, what are the parameters to be considered. But what the point I'm trying to make is, this fair value is not a sure shot number. It is more like an estimated number. Hence the choice, the company, or choice is given to the company. If you want, continue to show it at 1 lakh itself or choose a second option and show it at 10 lakh or 1 million. This is okay with you? So far, done. that's the first comps. Either one of them could be chosen based on company ka choice. That's the first point. Suppose, suppose this HUL said, we will go for second option. We will go for second option. Tell me the journal entry when they purchase the land, sir. That will help me out. They purchase the land for 1 lakh dollars. What is the journal entry they'll pass? The journal entry that you will pass is land account debit $100,000 to cash or bank. Generally, the payment will be made through a banking channel. So, we'll write it as bank. So, this is the journal entry they'll pass. Okay. Now, HUL wants to show 1 million or 10 million. Or they want to show it at $100,000 or 10 lakh dollars. 10 lakh dollars. That's the choice they have exercised. Now, can they still show this land at 1 lakh or they have to increase it? This land, can it be still shown at 1 lakh now or have they have to increase this? They have chosen to show this at 10 lakh means land value now you have to decrease or increase. Increase from 1 lakh you have to bring it up to 10 lakhs. What is the increased amount? 9 lakh. Yes. That means can you tell me the journal entry that they need to pass now? Currently, HUL is showing the land at 1 lakh, but they want to show it at 10 lakhs. So, if you want to increase, no, just like that, you can't increase. In accounts, if you want to change, if you want to do any plus minus, you have to pass a journal entry. That is what I'm asking you. What journal entry will HUL pass now? They will write land account debit. Because in accounts, we don't have plus minus. If you have to, if land, land is an assets, assets have what balance? Debit balance. In accounts, if something has debit balance and if you have to increase it, what will you do? Again, debit it. If you have to decrease it, you will credit it. Now, you want to increase the value of the land or decrease it? Increase. That means you will again debit land. By how much? From 1 lakh, you have to bring it up to 10 lakh. So, how much you need to increase it by? You need to increase it by 9 lakh dollars, can I say? 1 lakh is already debited. Again, if you debit 9 lakh, 1 lakh plus 9 lakh will become automatically 10 lakh dollars. This is the journal entry, the debit portion. Comfortable? Okay. Sir, can I credit bank account here? Can HUL credit bank account here? No. Why? Because did they pay this 9 lakh to anybody? This, you know, 
will be parked in a separate account known as revaluation surplus. This will be parked in a separate account known as revaluation. In your uh, Indian scenario, you must have seen this as revaluation reserve. I don't know if you have done some balance sheet, no? you would have seen something known as revaluation reserve. That is nothing but revaluation surplus, which we call it over here. This will be parked in this particular reserve. That is a journal entry. That's the first aspect or uh, journal entry aspect of it. Done? Okay. Sir, my question to you now is, this 9 lakh dollars, first of all, HUL will have a happy face here or a sad face? This particular scenario, when they observe, when they have a happy face or a sad face? Sir, they bought land for 1 lakh. Its value now has become 10 lakh. Well, if the value increases, somebody will be sad. Huh? No, obviously, it's a happy face. So that means this 9 lakh, can I say it is a gain? It's a gain, can I call it? Yes, everyone, first aspect, gain. Is it a realized gain or it is a bookish gain? What sort of, what sort of a gain is this? Realized, realized gain means your HUL has got this, has got this money. That's what we call it as realized. Okay, meaning transaction is accrued, meaning it has happened. Or is this 9 lakh a bookish gain? Only on books is this a gain or in reality has HUL got this gain? Book only. Because in reality, may if HUL wants to make this gain, no, they actually have to sell the land. Have they sold the land? No. That means this 9 lakh is just a bookish gain. Yes or no? That means can I call this as an unrealized profit? This is not a realized profit. Can I call it as unrealized profit, sir? All unrealized profit will be shown in OCI. So, realized gains and losses will come in SPL. Unrealized gain loss will come in OCI. That is the funda of the example. Did you understand? You don't have to write down all these examples. It will come when I do A60. The point of putting this example is only to make you understand what will come in OCI. Can you repeat it for me so that I know that you have got it? What will come in OCI? All the unrealized gains and losses. That will be parked in OCI. But all the realized gains and losses will come in your PNL section. Hence, your now your PNL now will have two sections. One for your normal PNL, another one for your unrealized gains and losses, which we show it under OCI. That's all. If you now I'll open the floor. If you have any doubts, you can ask. There could be 101 OCI components, don't worry about it. What and all is OCI, unrealized, there are many, many examples. Each standard will talk about it. Why am I taking this topic earlier is, see when I go to AS16, you will see one line. This gain should be shown under OCI. If I have not explained what is OCI, will you understand that adjustment? No, that means I have to stop whatever I am doing, come back to OCI, explain all that and again retrace it back. To avoid those confusion, first only I am explaining what is this OCI, what is this OCI and all, and then taking up individual standards. That's the reason I said this is not really a topic, but it is, it just helps when we go through individual topics. Yeah, I'll just leave, give you about a few seconds in case you have anything, you can ask. No need to write down anything, everything is, it will come, all this will come in which way. Okay, awesome. So that's about our OCA. So that means the first bouncer or the first question mark is sorted for us. What is the question mark we had put for OCA? That is clear. Okay, so OCA simply means what, sir? It's a statement which captures all unrealized gains and losses. And one of the example of unrealized gain I gave you is revaluation gain or loss on PP. The PP example that I took was land. Like this, any fixed assets could be revalued. Just for example, sake, I took land. That's the first aspect. Okay. All right. There's another thing. Again, this is not something which is really important at this point of time. I'll just quickly tell later on when I go to individual standards, I'll spend more time on this. For now, no. There are some components in OCA. OCA basically is a gain. Can I call it like that? It's a gain or a loss. Some gains, no. After some point of time, from OCI, you will transfer to SPA. There are some gains after some point of time. Initially, they will stay as OCI. After some point of time, from OCI, it will move where? To PNL. 
if such is the case, we call those components as a recycled item or reclassified items. If you are able to transfer a gain from OCI to PNL, such gains we call it as reclassifiable items or recycled items. Each standard will talk about that, don't worry about it. Just the terms be aware that there is something known as what? Recycled item or reclassified items. If there are some gains which cannot be transferred from OCI to SPL, can I call PNL as SPL from now onwards? If you cannot transfer a gain from OCI to SPL later on, such items we call it as non recycled items or non reclassified items. None, each standard will talk about that. What example did I give now to explain OCI? Revaluation gain on PP. That is an example of non recycled item. IAS 16 prohibits this particular gain to be transferred from OCI to SPL. Like this, each standard will say, let's not go deep dive into that for now because we have not, have we touched upon any standard till now? Inter IAS, no, right? So let's not worry about this, but just be comfortable that there is something known as reclassified items, non reclassified items also. Each standard way when we go, we'll touch upon that. That's all with respect to OCI that you need to know. Uh, can I move on to the last question mark for this particular topic, which is what? SOCI. SOCI couple form is what? Statement of changes in equity. Or else, let's, one minute, let's see as a kind of a question mark for myself. Let's recap whatever we have learned from. Till now, whatever we learned, let's have a quick recap. What did we start with? You help me out here. The topic is published accounts. What will be published? Financial statements. What are the components of financial statements? Balance sheet, which we call it as statement of financial position. And then we don't call it as P&L. We call it as statement of profit or loss and, and, and other comprehensive income, which is OCI. Then statement of cash flows. Perfect. And then statement of changes in equity. So see, then some notes to accounts and explanatory statements. These all we call it as, or these all put together, we refer it as financial statements. Now in balance sheet, how do you categorize something as a current or non-current? Based on two parameters. Those parameters are current assets are those which are expected to be realized within 12 months from the balance sheet date. Current liabilities are those which are expected to be settled within 12 months from the balance sheet date. Second parameter is, Current assets are those which are expected to be realized or consumed within company's normal operating cycle. Current liabilities are those which are expected to be settled within company's normal operating cycle. Is it both the parameters or any one of the parameters? Anyone if it satisfies that good enough to classify it as a current. If it is not current, then automatically it gets classified as a non-current asset or a non-current liability. Okay, then what did we touch upon? I think straight away we went on to OCI. OCI simply means other comprehensive income. So basically what does OCI capture? All unrealized gains and losses. All these unrealized gains and losses will come under the OCI section of your PNL. Fine. And some components of OCI you can transfer from OCI to PNL. That we call it as reclassified or recycled items. If you are not able to transfer from OCI to PNL, such components we call it as non reclassified or non recycled items. That's your quick recap. Though we spent one hour now, provision happened just in about five minutes. Yes. So same, that's the help of your chart book. The entire topic, no, this particular topic, we are spend, spending close to two hours. It is just two pages for you in examination. Now to two pages for you to read, how much time will it take on the examination day? Maybe about five minutes max. That means within five minutes you can finish. That's the reason I have resorted to this chat format. Not only for this subject, all the subjects that I teach, I kind of resort to this chat format. That's the importance. Are we okay? All right. So that means can I move on to the SOCI? Statement of changes in equity. Oh. <clears throat> still there, no? I can finish this and uh, then if you want, you can give a break. Comfortable? All of us are there still? Okay, online also? There or logged off? See, people are there. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Uh, done. 
Sir, uh, I mentioned something known as shareholders funds. Do you remember? When we touched upon balance sheet ka format, instead of shareholders funds, we call it as capital and reserves. But in Indian context, just for establish, establishing better connection, I'm using Indian, Indian context, uh, context, assuming that you guys have done this, that's all. Do you remember what and all used to be shown under uh, shareholders funds? What and all? You used to show under shareholders funds when you used to prepare balance sheet. It's now we discussed. Perfect. Share capital. And then reserves and surplus. Awesome. These are the things which we show under shareholders funds. Yes. Any movement happening in this account, no? it will be captured in SOSI. What did I say? Anything, any movement or any change happening either in share capital or any change happening either in reserves and surplus. And by change, I mean an increase or a decrease. If either of this component is increasing or decreasing, that will be shown in a fancy statement known as statement of changes in equity. Basically, here equity refers to this one. Equity refers to share capital and reserves and surplus. Comfortable in your Indian context, you used to prepare when you prepare balance sheet. Note number one, you used to prepare for share capital. Remember, note number two always used to be for reserves and surplus. So C is nothing but combination of those two working notes. Note 1 and plus note 2 if you combine, no, that itself is nothing but so Got it, got it, got it. Yes. Okay, this is one way to remove. There's another way to put it up as well. So C basically captures, listen to this and see if you agree with me. So C basically captures transaction between company and the shareholders. Do you agree with my statement? So C captures the transaction happening between Company, it's no need to write down, just listen, everything is called out over here. So C captures the transaction between company and its shareholders. Now you can you tell me what and all transaction a company and a company ka shareholder can they get into? If you buy, suppose Reliance ka share, you're a shareholder of Reliance. Can Reliance or will Real Reliance give you something back? Will you get anything from Reliance? Do you trade in shares? And if you buy or sell shares, no. Okay, have you heard about this? Something known as dividend. Dividend. Dividend is paid to whom? Shareholders. Who will pay the dividend? Company. So that means, can I say, dividend paid is a transaction between company and the shareholder. That dividend paid will get captured in source. Or if I have to even further simplify, if you remember first PO, 11th standard of yours. Have you done partnership accounts? You used to prepare a trading account. After that, you used to prepare p and l account. After p and l account, you used to prepare p and l appropriation account. So C is nothing but p and l appropriation. Getting enough context? That's all so C aims to capture. Alright. So dividend paid, something like interest paid to partners, commission paid to partners, salary paid to partners, where you used to show in PNL appropriation. Yes. Here you're going to show it's a company scenario that we're talking about. So salary interest and all will not be paid. What will you pay to the shareholder? Dividend. So dividend paid will get captured under statement of changes in equity. That's all. Okay. Can you think of any other example? A transaction happening between company and the shareholder. One I gave you, dividend, dividend example. Anything else that you can think of? I gave it already, that's the reason I'm asking. In my example I gave only, it is there. That's the reason I'm asking. Shares purchased. If a shareholder purchases, yes, that means initially when IPO, IPO have you heard, who will allot the share? Company. To whom the shares will be allotted? Shareholder. Shareholder will give money. Company will give share certificate. Yes. So that means what? Shares issued is a transaction happening between company and the shareholder. Where do you think that transaction will get captured? So see. 
if you can issue the shares can you also redeem the shares or buy back the shares yes so the issue of shares redemption of shares or buyback of shares also gets captured under soci so soci is nothing but your capital and reserves come moment it tries to capture any movement happening between capital and reserves no it gets captured in statement of changes any anyway, that's pretty much the thing earlier used to prepare pnl appropriation as an account here same more or less the same component you need to get you need to present that as a statement and the name of that statement is soci that's pretty much uh, the things here sir unless you have any doubts i think we can uh, pick up a question any questions you have no okay any anything remaining okay there's one maybe quickly i'll run through this off okay there's something also known as exceptional items okay sir. Uh, what is this exceptional item? Again, this is not that important from the examination context, but still it is just given as a para, so I quickly run through them. So far, you are liking my classes, huh? And it's going as bouncer up. 50 50, sir. We'll see later. We'll come in too early to comment. And they're saying, okay, no worries. Uh, suppose, just hypothetical scenario. Huh? Suppose you didn't like the classes. Suppose you didn't like the classes. So normally you like don't like the classes means you say don't didn't like and go right you took one step extremes you filed a case only sir you filed a court case against Ari Bukhra hey, Dabba faculty waste fellow he is nothing I understood and you filed a case all right so unfortunately we had to settle the amount assumption again just just a hypothetical scenario if you don't like you know tell I'll improve don't put case in all okay uh, all right so I have to pay for this damages court case for damages we are paying is it an expense for us for an academy perspective is it an expense guys if i show this expense under let's say administrative expense or distribution cost and all will the user get to know about this particular item this particular case which have litigation settlement which we are doing will the readers of financial statement get to know about this okay so if you imagine this may look small to us but in case of certain companies sensitive industries like pharma and all right all right these cases and all are can run into millions and millions of dollars i don't know whether you remember mcd i think some woman had put a filed a case saying on that uh, the coffee mug right it was not written that uh, the coffee was not hot she had filed a case against that she burnt her hand or something because the coffee spilled okay and i think she put a case and she was awarded some hundred thousand dollars or something for that and later on, I think a MACD changed their policies. Now, if you see the cup, you no, know, they write somewhere. The coffee is hot or something like that. It is there actually. Like these are okay. That looks a little trivial, but especially in case of pharma industries, you know. Now you took uh, you're using Cipla, Biocon, all these tablets, uh, paracetamol and all. Suppose paracetamol may so you took and it gives side effects. Will people keep quiet? Huh? They'll make sure that that company shut down. Yes or no? I mean, these are pretty serious issues. Yes, may not be. For a coaching industry, it may not be that trivial, but for sensitive industries where you are kind of uh, playing with people's life, right? Those could be a big things. Yes. So uh, coming back to the example, if I show this particular expense under uh, the distribution cost or anything, will the user come to know about this? Somebody who reads the financial statement, somebody who reads that p &L, will they get to know about this litigation settlement? No. So what the standard says is if you have any material item, be it an expense or an income, doesn't matter. Okay, don't club it along with your normal item. Disclose this separately. Don't directly put it off under administrative expense. Show it as a separate category of expense so that the users or the readers of financial statement will understand financial statements better. That's all is exceptional right? Did you understand? those item of income and expenses if you feel are necessary to be disclosed to understand financial statements better disclose them separately don't play that chupa rustam don't hide it somewhere show that make it pretty evident okay that's all is exceptional item one example of exceptional item i gave is what litigation settlement there could be many things like this like discontinued operation suppose we want to discontinue acca coaching we run many coaching, right? Many things, ACC, ACA, CMA, US, like this. Hypothetical again. Suppose we decided we're going to discontinue ACCA coaching, all right? So that means will our financial readers of financial statements want to know about it? 
do they want to know that we are wanting to discontinue the ACC? See, if I want to discontinue, means today only I'll say Tata bye bye and go on. See, I've started the class now. Can I say hey, to hell with you, I'm going and can I walk out or I have to finish my batch and then go? We have, whatever we have started, we should complete. Yes or not? At least this batch we should complete. Okay. That means if this batch I'm completing means will I get some profit or loss from ACCA for this batch at least? See, I'm doing a batch. I don't want to do it henceforth. But this batch at least I'm doing. Will I get some profit or loss from this batch of ACCA? Yes. So that we call it as discontinued operations. Meaning there are certain activities which currently I am doing, which I don't want to continue. Okay, so since you are doing the operations currently, from that operation you will get some profit or you will get some loss. Show that separately because they are exceptional items. They are necessary for the readers to know and understand financial statements better. That's all is exceptional items. So with this, all the concepts relating to this particular uh, concepts we are done with. If you have any doubts, I, I we can take it up or if you are through, We'll see what to do. Anything here? Anyone? No? Comfortable so far? How about online? All okay? All okay, Sarji? Give me a heads up. Yes or no would be nice. Sometimes online, no? They'll be doing 101 things. IPL is not even started for you. can respond at least. It's okay. 7.30 it starts. Hmm. Yeah, they're saying yes, no. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay, so now I'll leave it to you guys. One problem I'd like to do it. Okay, so you want to do that problem and then take a break or take a break and then do that problem. It's about uh, half an hour to 40 minutes maybe. What is that problem is all about? Preparing balance sheet, preparation of p &L, preparation of SOCI and preparation of OCI. How these components will look like? One simple problem we'll take out. That's all, just to give you a little bit of practical idea to what we have related so far. So how do you want to approach? You want to take a break and resume 40 minutes or resume and then take a break. Either way, it's okay. That means if you do that problem, the topic will be completed. Then we can move on to uh, problem class. Somebody saying after the problem class will end our sir. If you end it, we'll take it and then we'll end it is what they're saying. <laughs> they're smart. Okay, I don't think so class will end because I think timing has been communicated to you, I believe. It's going to be a little big session. Saturday, Sunday, it's going to be an off. I hope they have told you. Yeah, so I think Monday to Friday, we need to take up. We have to stick to that stipulated time. Otherwise, we'll have to cross the schedule. Hmm? So more or less, I think we'll stick to the timings that we have given. If you want today, if you feel I have reached that Buddha zone, where whatever you are telling, nothing I am understanding, then we'll wind up. Because we want to learn, but at the same time, we don't want to put too much pressure and learn also. So you feel okay. So that means we can uh, continue or break and do it. Somebody is saying first day, no sir, please leave off. Mm. <laughs> all, all emotional drama, Atya Char they doing. Mm, okay. Okay, somebody is saying problem and then break, sir. I already took problem. Mm, and he's saying online people, no? whenever they want, they can take break. How about here? What do we do? 40 minutes, if you are ready to sustain, if your mind can take in, I'll just move on and start. For off at 10. Uh, somebody is saying I have reached that zone. Okay. All right, fair enough. So let's do a thing. Let's take a break for about 15 minutes. Come back and do that particular question. Thank you.